This is Marketing Jam, a show featuring the brightest minds in marketing. Brought to you by Canada Post. Head to canadapost.ca forward slash insight podcast for ideas to add value to your marketing. Thanks everyone for joining us on another week of Marketing Jam. I'm very excited uh, to welcome you here. Again, a huge thanks to Canada Post and of course their amazing insight magazine uh, full of case studies, research, ideas, uh, insights as well into the marketing world. Tons of great inspiration, tons of great ideas on what offline strategies can look like, what print strategies can look like, what mailing strategies can look like, and how those can all integrate into your digital campaigns, your online campaigns, and whatever else you're doing to raise awareness about your brand. So make sure you subscribe to Insight Magazine, link in the notes. Uh, and without further ado, I want to invite our guest today, Fatima. Thank you so much for joining us here. Thanks. Happy to be here. So Fatima, you are a brand director of EY Canada, which is amazing. And those that don't know what EY is, who is EY and what do they do? EY is traditionally known as an accounting and tax firm, I think, uh, when, when you think about it. However, um, it's much broader than that. We also have consulting services. So a lot of we're considered professional services. Yeah. OK, amazing. And, and have you always wanted to go into marketing for professional services? Has that kind of been your kind of goal since you were you know, a kid? That's no, not specifically on the professional services side or even on the marketing side. Mm-hmm. I think falling into marketing has been has been a journey and it's been a journey by process of elimination. So I actually the irony is I originally did apply to university to go into an accounting program at the University of Waterloo. I had no idea what I why I had done that, um, but I opted for the safer route of going into business instead mm-hmm. and had three co-op terms. So in my three co-op terms, I tested out different areas of business. So my first one was in HR, my second one was in strategy, and my third one was in marketing. And that's really where my love for marketing began and then grew. And while my original kind of goal was to go to law school, that never happened because I just loved marketing so much and stayed down that path. Um, My fall into uh, professional services started, it was my second job out of university. Um, I first started in a tech startup, which I always say for students starting out, like at some point in your career, you should definitely um, work with a startup. There's so much to learn and you get to have your hands in a whole bunch of different things. Um, But then my second job was at Deloitte. And I spent about a year there, just enough to get a taste for professional services, but not enough to like fully learn or grasp, um, you know, all the different areas of of the business. My focus was on marketing, um, but I left to do my MBA and I, I, I did my MBA full time. After that, fell in. I started working at TELUS and I, I spent 12 years of my career at TELUS. Um, and then I was really looking for a change. I was looking for the next step in my in my journey. Um, and, and this role really appealed to me at EY. Um, it's a great firm with a wonderful brand, but I think at the same time, it was very exciting as a marketer to have the opportunity to influence brand marketing and communications. And rarely do you have all of that together within one group. So I, I felt like I had the opportunity to, to make a really good impact. That's amazing. And, and as far as kind of your role within EY, what, what does that look like? Because marketing, again, is such a broad term, right? And there's brand marketers and digital marketers. How would you say what your role is compared to maybe some other peers in your kind of world at EY? What first comes to mind is a chain of all trades. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But it's a really large team. So, um, you know, there are members of our team focused on demand generation, so campaigns. Mm -hmm. Um, There are other members of our team focused on on field marketing or regional marketing. And then you have your core marketing functions of pulling that all together, like digital marketing, PR and communications, reporting and analytics. So we have a variety uh, of different teams and we work really, really closely with our business development or sales organization. And we're very entrenched in, in the business. So we spend a lot of members of our team spend a good amount of time with the different partners, the different areas of our firm. So yeah, you're a marketer, but you're also, 
we understand the business and that is kind of the the relationship that we've developed with the members of the firm. And what about working with EY America? Like what's it like working for a Canadian brand that's part of a, a global uh, kind of look and feel? Yeah, I like to use the term global um, because we're local. We run as our own independent entity, but we're very much supported by two levels. First at the Americas level and then at the global level. Um, so there are campaigns and larger brand initiatives, for example, that we would import um, from our from our global level. There are studies, there are brand studies that we do at that level. There are different reports that we do. Um, but then there's also things that we do uniquely in Canada. So if we're taking a global report, let's talk about the global information security study. Yep. Um, we would Canadianize that content and look at data cuts specific to Canada. Um, but then there's other studies that we run only in Canada and develop unique content. So that's why I call it global. That's amazing. So would you say kind of all the different roles in marketing and kind of on your team, different personalities kind of are drawn to different types of marketing? And how would you kind of describe that? Yeah, I think it's a mix of generalists and specialists. Okay. So on the generalist side, if you're you're in a demand generation sure. capacity, you really want to have at least a peripheral understanding of all of the different functions in the marketing realm, in the business development area, and in the business, right? So you're kind of, you're, you're project managing, you're able to pull it all together. Yeah. But then when you come to areas like digital marketing or in social media, that's a specific skill set. Yeah. And, and we, you know, we've really just rebuilt our, our team. We're looking at bringing in different skill sets. Mm -hmm. And so I've just been on that journey and it's really nice to have you know a great team in place now um but i would say those are more specialized skills and then of course you have like business analysts as well and those who are really good with reporting and dashboards and forecasting yeah so you worked to tell us which again uh, is everywhere from mobile devices to internet to yeah. now it's like even telehealth which is amazing kind of tell us is kind of you know, has the whole gamut of everything yeah. um which again, Vancouver office, if you haven't been there yet, those that visit yeah. Vancouver, there mm -hmm. is this beautiful koi stream and a piano in the lobby, um, which I don't know if you can play that piano freely or not. I think they have a security guard to make sure that not anyone plays the <laughs> piano. Um, beautiful building. Uh, but what was it like going from marketing for TELUS, which again is more of like a consumer service to professional services, which can be more of a B2B versus a B2C? For me personally, it wasn't so different because at TELUS, I worked on the B2B side. Mm. So I supported SMB, then enterprise, yep. and the mid-market. And then about a year before I left, I spent about a year in TELUS Health as well. So okay. I'm very familiar yeah. um, with that space. But again, it was on, on the B2B side. Mm -hmm. So from that perspective, it wasn't very different. But also in terms of structure, complexity. I think when you're you're walking into a professional services yeah. firm, one of the really big things to consider is it's very much matrix. You have many, yeah. many stakeholders, yeah. lots of different partners. I didn't find it that much of a transition um, coming from TELUS because mm -hmm. we had over 300 products on the business side. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people don't realize that. They think of simple SKUs, but when you get down into the enterprise and business space, there's a lot of custom work um, that gets done. So it mm -hmm. actually isn't that different, and I could extrapolate a, a lot of the learning yep. that I had there into this environment. Of course, from a business perspective, yep. there's a lot to learn. We're not selling unified communications, mm -hmm. but core themes like digital transformation, yeah. automation. Yeah. We have a technology, media, and telecommunications group. Like there is a lot of good overlap. And within telecom, we do look at the industry level as well. So, you know, our consumer products yeah. uh, focus here and retail versus my CPG focus mm -hmm. there. It, there is um, there's some overlap. And, and for you in your position, like there's all sorts of conferences and events and webinars, especially these days, lots of webinars you could be going to. Yeah. Uh, how do you filter out knowing that like, oh, that's very much for B2C versus B2B? Like, how, how are, what's kind of your filter for knowing, hey, this is the training I need or this is the people I should be interacting with? Because B2C isn't as relevant, I would assume, on the B2B world. 
It is a fine line and mm -hmm. often cues can be the speakers that are on there or, you know, some of the text that's in the invite. There was a Globe and Mail one that I attended very recently mm -hmm. and had the opportunity to ask a question. They actually said my name right, which was amazing. Um, was the Content Studios one with Sean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, they're, they're awesome. Yeah, Sean's been on the show. He's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was great. And, you know, it was more B2C focused. Yeah. yeah. But you can still take a lot of the learnings and apply it to B2B. So kind of my vision for where, you know, we're going with our team, I've only been in this role for, for nine months, so it's still very nascent, is not just to look at our core competitive set, to, be a, to do things that are driving continuous innovation and having an impact in the market. I really think we need to broaden those best practice organizations that we looked at. So for us, we're looking at other best practice B2B organizations. Mm -hmm. But there are also some consumer brands that I think are doing an amazing job. And so I think they're still relevant. It's how you apply it. That's where you kind of need to tweak um, what you actually do and how you bring it to life. But it can still influence and inspire a lot of thinking. That's awesome. So That's you awesome. mentioned Sean's uh, Globe content series that he's putting out, which is awesome. So Globe Mail putting out some great yeah. marketing learnings. Uh, where else do you go for inspiration, ideas, resources? I'm a big reader mm -hmm. um, and I, I had a goal in 2020 to read two books a month. Nice. I've been able to stay on track, yeah. but I find a lot of inspiration from that. So right now um, I'm reading Richard Branson's Finding My Virginity. He relaunched right. it. Yeah. Um, I read The Ride of a Lifetime by Bob Iger. I'm a big mm -hmm. Disney fan, mm -hmm. so that was that was really great. Um, and there's a, a bunch of, I, I tend to like autobiographies because yeah, I think yeah. there's a lot that you can learn. So I'm reading Jack Ma um, and Steve Jobs. I think there's really interesting stories and I like to understand how things came to be. Um, but I'm also looking at, you know, listening to more podcasts mm -hmm. and the, there's an Entre Leadership series. I don't know if you've ever listened to that one. Mm -hmm. But the first podcast I heard from that series, I just kind of fell upon. I think it was an Instagram ad that nice. I saw. Nice. Um, nice. And it was linked to a book called Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. Hmm. If you've never read the book, I think I read it three times this year. Yeah, like yeah. it kind of changed a lot of things for me being a marketer. And I always say to my sales friends, I'm like, you're a closet marketer. At the end of the day, like it's either you're you're in sales or you're in marketing. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it just talked about how to negotiate, but in a way, like often we're not negotiating for our lives, mm -hmm. but the writer of this book, actually, he's a hostage negotiator. Wow. So he has had to make really quick decisions that are life impacting. Um, and now he's taking it more into the business realm with wider, wider teaching. So I find things like that super fascinating. And of course, if he can do it in that environment, we can certainly do it in our day to day. Wow, that's amazing. And, and what are you seeing as far as like trends right now in the marketing world, especially on the B2B side? What, what are you kind of watching or what are you kind of keeping your, uh, your finger on the pulse and, and kind of tracking and being like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm watching that and it's fascinating. I'm, I'm noticing a lot more storytelling mm. and those emotional human connections. Mm -hmm. We, we often say within our team, it's not B2B, it's not B2C, it's B2H, business to human. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm really driven by issues-based marketing yeah. or things that are really making a statement and telling a story. This is not a B2B example, but uh, Nike's Dream Crazier ad last yeah. year with Serena Williams. So good. That was so good. And yeah, controversial, but addressing the elephant in the room and a real issue that many people face. So I love those kinds of stories. I think, you know, in, in the B2B realm, um, we've made progress on account-based marketing, ABM, but I haven't seen many examples of people doing it amazingly well. So I, I'm looking in, in that space. And then just in digital, I mean, there's so much opportunity, mm -hmm. but it's connecting the mm -hmm. whole journey and having that connected view of the full customer story from beginning to end with all of those 
precursors and retargeting opportunities. For me, I'm fascinated by connecting it all together to really be able to tell that amazing story that we want to tell or be where a client or prospect needs us to be before they even knew or they could articulate that they had a need, but yeah. the data was telling us that they did. Now, for, for your brand, EY, where are people typically discovering EY for the first time when we're talking about marketing and brand awareness and what's typically are you hearing is kind of the first touch on that customer journey? It, it is very much a relationship-based mm -hmm. business. So I think we have a very broad account base and many of them are, are have our partners have relationships mm -hmm. with specific clients. So, yeah. you know, you're, you're definitely looking there. Um, Events and broad exposure kind of uh, forums also seem to be a place where I think because EY is, is very much known in its bread and butter territory of accounting and tax, mm -hmm. we have a real awareness um, opportunity and branding opportunity in things like advisory or consulting mm -hmm. and demonstrating that, hey, we are very much focused on intelligent automation. Mm -hmm. We are bringing digital to audits. Um, there's a lot of exciting things happening, including supply chain reinvention, which many businesses are mm -hmm. thinking about right now. So. Um, I think it's it's kind of varied. There there are trade areas if you're looking yeah. at mine and mining and metals, but then there's broad forums as well. Mm -hmm. And and just to speak to this, being in a time right now when trade shows and events are not happening as much, you know, EY, you're famous for your great water bottles. I've seen you at trade shows before. <laughs> DX3, I got a water bottle, and and you know, you, you've got beautiful, you know, kind of collateral. Uh, what are you guys doing as far as like if, in a world? that doesn't have trade shows, is there alternatives? Are you guys trying some new things or how are you kind of pivoting in that realm? I think there, there's silver lining in every situation. Yeah. And I continue to say with my team, the silver lining is the timing for us. I think it was, it's time that we needed to pivot yeah. and it's where I was really looking to go. And so we are, you know, obviously we have more webcasts and virtual roundtables and the virtual roundtables have been very interesting bringing together a small cluster yeah. of clients or prospects to have really deep dialogues in different mm. areas. It's also forcing us to make um, decisions around, you know, I think in the past we've gone after a lot, but where are our big bets going to be and how are we going to prioritize? So it's kind of shifting the narrative mm -hmm. and the conversations that we're having around how do you have bigger impact done in a different way, it doesn't mean less, sometimes less is more. And, yeah. and we're going down that path. That's amazing. So if you had an opportunity to talk to yourself when you were just getting into marketing, you know, finishing off school and getting your yeah. first job, and you could give some advice to your younger self, what would that advice be? I'm naturally an introvert, so I'm not anymore. I'm a learned extrovert, but I would, it, to my younger self, I would just say, don't be afraid. Like you, you're going to get experience. You're going to make mistakes. Mistakes are great. You learn from them. So kind of maintain a launch, learn, adjust philosophy, mm -hmm. but just be all in and take every opportunity. I love Richard Ban Branson's quote. Um, if someone gives you an opportunity, say yes and figure out how later. Mm. I think it's 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 wonderful advice for anyone starting out their career. And then the other piece is really just, you know, the the tech startup that I was mm -hmm. mentioning. Yeah. I had no idea what I was walking into. I was taking yeah. on a director's role who's going on mat leave and I was 22 years old. Mm -hmm. um, but the fact that I got to do that job and I got to work on direct mail, I got to work on digital, I got to work on events, I got to work on new websites, mm -hmm. so many things that I wouldn't have the opportunity to do in a large organization. Just take advantage of those opportunities and say yes. That's awesome. That's great advice. Um, question for you, those that are maybe um, pivoting their jobs, maybe starting their career from scratch and they have some marketing experience. What's your advice for someone who's getting into the professional services marketing specifically, whether it's law firms or accounting firms, kind of what's something that they should keep in mind if they want to get into that world and, and start kind of working in marketing for a professional service? I think first you have to be really comfortable in gray. 
Okay. Um, so there's, you know, there's, there's a lot of gray and yeah. it, it's a matrix organization. Mm-hmm. And I find people either love it or don't. Mm. I love it. And, and I yeah. think you need to be willing to be out of your comfort zone. Yeah. And often you're interfacing with, with leaders who are partners of the firm yeah. and you need to be willing to stand up and share your point of view or share your thoughts. You can't be intimidated. Um, so that's really the the only advice. I think core marketing skills are yeah. key and they're very much needed regardless of the industry or the space. So kind of apply your best self and bring your best self to work. Awesome. And this next year, this upcoming year, what are you personally most excited about in the world of marketing and, and branding? What's kind of like, are you like, man, this is, this is something I'm hopeful for. This is something that I think is going to be a game changer or just something that I'm just encouraged by. Um. So I'm I'm almost okay with the year ending now because 2020 has been has been interesting. Um, I'm really excited personally about the new team that I have and kind of having a year under my belt and being able to do really exciting things. I think the first year you're very much learning. Um, we've brought on new tools and we've brought on new people and we have a very clear vision of where we want to go and lots of new and exciting things that we want to try. So I'm really excited about testing, learning, and then really pivoting to the things that that matter and having really great impact. That's awesome. And if someone wants to be a part of your team, where can they go to like maybe woo you and apply and just show you that, man, they deserve a, a spot on Team Fatima? Well, I think our, our job postings are always online, yeah. so so check that out and, and feel free to reach out on, on LinkedIn to myself or my team. Yeah. We're always happy to have a chat or coffee yeah. with whoever is interested. That's amazing. Thank you so much for being on the show today. This was great advice, great learnings. And, and if I may be so bold to ask, if you, do you, are you a Goodreads member? Do you track where all your books that you have or that you recommend? Do you have like a blog somewhere about your favorites? I don't, but I actually do take really good notes. So somewhere in my Google Keep, I, I document a few notes from all the different books of things that I, I want to remember and I want to continue to look back on to motivate myself. So maybe that's a project for me in the future is to kind of do a little mini book report or a blog where people can follow. Yeah, and maybe I'll follow up and get maybe your top three for marketers okay. that they should be or your top three must reads. For marketers and we'll at least put those links in, in the the notes here and and uh because those books that you recommend sound amazing and uh and i'm sure they people can learn a lot from them so awesome thanks so much for having me yeah thanks for coming on the show thanks everyone for joining us this week on marketing jam uh this was a great one uh b2b it, it's a rarity here on marketing jam and a, and a huge treat and i think all those that are in b2b marketing um probably got a lot of great gems here a lot of great ideas and we'll see you next week on the jam